I became interested in this, started thinking about it during a prescribed burn. I had read some things and was wondering if there was the potential for smoke to be transporting microorganisms. I figured there had been a lot of work done on this before, but it turned out that there had only been one very small study that had ever associated particulate matter with number of fungal spores during a wildland fire smoke episode. So I wanted to explore that further, and we started with really small projects with graduate students holding petri plates up to smoke. We continued with a number of different methods, started experimenting in the iFire lab here. And as we were working on this, my postdoc at the time and I didn't really have a way to talk about it. And so we just made up the name. We tried a lot of different derivations, but what pyroaerobiology is, is the study of the transport of microorganisms through wildland fire smoke and their consequences. We are trying to determine whether the translocation of microbes through wildland fire smoke has an impact on the ecosystems where they land. And we are trying to determine whether the organisms that we find in smoke are potentially pathogenic to humans. I started my PhD coming from being a wildland firefighter for about seven seasons all around northern Idaho, up on the Panhandle Hotshots and on the Nez Perce Clearwater National Forest. And I was really interested in this PhD because of the complications that firefighters have with smoke and seeing firefighters become infected and knowing that that's possibly from the smoke. So we collect smoke samples, specifically microbial aerosols, using drones and various sensors attached to the drone to correlate to fire behavior and how that's affecting the microbes. We assumed that when wildfire occurs, and this has been an assumption for a long time, that there's generally a decrease in the microbial communities. And of course that makes sense because there's high temperatures, but we are starting to think about smoke as kind of a temporary, potentially a temporary refuge for organisms. So some of the, the top findings that we've arrived at so far are number one, that the concentrations of microbes in smoke is very high. And the concentrations are about four times to five times higher than what we find in background conditions. And the other thing that's really interesting is that somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of the organisms that we find in smoke seem to be viable. I would say that there are maybe an infinite number of questions that remain to be answered. Can we use the genetic fingerprint of smoke to identify when we're measuring smoke far downwind where that smoke came from? Can there be repercussions for the smoke that is transported over large water bodies, for example. So the effects can be certainly beyond the terrestrial, but also range to aquatic ecosystems. What are the impacts on crop systems? What are the impacts on any of the things that we care about um, growing on the land? Or is it transporting beneficial organisms that we know are critical for soil functioning? That is definitely what makes this such an interesting line of research.